Hey everybody, this is Mark Heaps for PSD Tuts, and today I'm going to walk you guys through this graphic that I built and how to make all of the parts for the gold chain and the lettering here in this necklace. Um, I basically started with just a photograph of a local model here, Cheyenne, um, but I uh, ended up deciding that I want to put a chain around him, kind of like you see in CD covers and videos, things like that. So let's, uh, let's break down the parts and uh, see how it's all made. So the first thing up on the necklace that I want to show you is how I did the lettering. And basically I just did this quick little fake graffiti tag, graffiti style lettering, um, which is pretty easy to do when you've played around with the brushes enough. Um, you can see here, that's what it turned into on the necklace. And the way that we do this is just take our regular round brush and modify it. So you can see I've just got a default round hard brush here chosen. Now there are calligraphy brushes, you can pick those and there's nothing wrong with that, but I figured for people that don't know, um, we should show them how to modify this. So just take that round brush, bring up your brush settings, uh, you do that by pushing F5, and then over here on the controller for brush tip shape, you can just grab this part of the brush diagram, thin that out and rotate it until you get your marker in a way that you want. Now I'm going to reduce the spacing because I don't want to risk having any like scalloped edges like that. So I'm just going to take that all the way out, and then by pressing F5 I'm going to get rid of it again. And now you can sit here and practice tagging on a new layer, uh, pretty much until you get letters that you like. So you could sit here and do like a P, an S, and a D for PSD toots. Uh, I don't like that D, so let's try it again. So just hit undo, got that there, drop below. All right, so there's my PSD toots. So the next part that was in the composite piece was the chain. And uh, this is sort of another step on how to manipulate brushes and, and uh, use those for a composite like this. So I need to get the links of the chain made. And so you can see here, there's just these little pieces that I painted in. Um, but I really don't feel like making each of those separate objects. So what I did was I grabbed a rounded rectangle shape here and uh, just drew that in. Okay. Now I'm going to want this to be sideways, so let's just do that. And then what I'm going to do here is define a brush preset. And to do that, I need to get my stroke look first. So let me turn off this black background. What I'm going to do is reduce the fill to 0%. And what this will do is reduce the visible pixels, but it won't reduce the visibility of a layer style. So now I can take advantage of picking stroke. Here's a layer stroke. Make this a little bit of a smaller size. And I'm going to set it to inside so it's nice and tight. Eh, let's try like a 6. That looks pretty good. Now press OK on that, and now if I just make a little marquee around it, go up to Edit, and come down to Define Brush Preset. This has been available in Photoshop for years and years and years. I'm just going to call this Link, hit OK, and then Deselect. Now here comes the important part about this. So as I'm uh, painting, let me just show you guys what I mean. I'm going to make this a white background here. As I paint on a new layer, don't need my shape layer anymore, let's delete it. I grab my brush, I go into that brush palette again. You'll see down here at the bottom is the link that I made. Now when you choose this and you go to paint with it, it looks just like you would expect. It's just that shape being used to produce a line. But if we go back into those custom brush presets, okay, go back into shape dynamics, what we want to be able to do is add a little bit of size jitter and a little bit of angle jitter. And then when we look back at our brush tip shape, this is where we want to increase the spacing unlike earlier. And you're trying to get to the point where these are just barely touching. You notice that starts looking like our chain? So now I've got them pretty close. I'm going to go back to my shape dynamics and make sure that I don't have too much of a size jitter. And what I want is to not have the size vary based on the Wacom tablet that I'm using. So I'm going to turn that off. Now you can see it much more clearly. And the angle, I want to follow direction. And what this does is whichever way I paint, it's going to follow the direction. So now when I paint over here, you can see it follows the flow of the Wacom. Now this works with a mouse as well. It doesn't actually matter that I'm using a stylus. So the cool thing here is as you paint, it just makes the chain. If I wanted to space that out more, I could just come back here and experiment with the spacing under Shape Dynamics and that's how I painted my chain. So I painted one down one side for the left of the neck, one down the right side for the other side of the neck, 
And while I had them on their own layer, I just masked areas out so it looked like it was wrapping around the back of his neck. Pretty easy technique, but it works very, very well. Okay, let's start looking at how we produce the gold. Okay, so next up is getting this onto the photograph and making everything into gold. And there are a lot of different ways to make gold textures inside of Photoshop, but ultimately, I cheated. And that's okay, because sometimes you need to save time and someone's already made a tool that does the job really well for you. So for me, as long as I have control, that's what's important. So let's, uh, let's look at a couple of things here. First and foremost, if this is going to become my necklace lettering, um, I need this bottom word to touch the top word, because you can't have gold float in space. So let me uh, just grab that really quickly. I'm just going to do a quick lasso around it. It's the only thing on that layer. So I can just nudge that up here. If you're worried about this, copy it to a new layer. Um, but I'm just going to move this around until I like what I see. I think somewhere right around there works for me. All right, deselect. OK, so now I've got the shape for my letters. So what I'm going to do here is duplicate this over to my photograph. OK, so now there's my necklace letters. OK and we'll put those in place. Now, if I want to make them gold, um, first and foremost, the filter that I'm using is made by Filter Forge, and they have a filter preset inside of Filter Forge called Metalize or Metalize, and uh, I really like the way that one looks, so I'm going to use that. And the trick with that filter is it doesn't work very well on black, I've noticed. So what I'm going to do is just lock out my transparent area of that layer, and then I'm going to fill it with 50% gray, and you can do that by just hitting shift F5 or going to edit fill and one of the content options is 50% gray so as I choose that it fills it in and now I can kind of move this into position for wherever I want to have it I think somewhere right around there and I'm gonna make a duplicate of this layer and I'll show you why in just a second but what we need to do is convert this duplicate into gold right so I'm gonna turn the first one off take my duplicate here I'm gonna to go to filter come down to Filter Forge, which I installed earlier. It's really easy to install. You just download it from their site. And uh, as this opens up, you can see it's defaulting to my Metalizer. Sorry, Metalizer. Uh, the names are very, very peculiar, but they work well. So you can see here, um, up in Filter Forge, we have a series of categories on the left. Then we've got the filters available to that category on the right. So this one falls under Miscellaneous, and I installed this directly from their website. Now, any filter that you have down here at the bottom has factory presets, but if you don't like the settings of a preset or the appearance, you also have control of the settings here, like the tint, the smoothness, the reflection blur, the size of the effect, um, and we also have lighting. So you can go in here and pick what sort of lighting environment uh, is manipulating these highlights and shadows and creating these. So right now I'm going to use Entrance Night, but you could use Bridge or Church, and they all give very, very different effects. Um, in here you can also choose surface height like a bump map, uh, your saturation for the color applied, and the overall brightness. So I'm going to leave these as the defaults as I'm pretty happy with this preset, and I'm just going to go ahead and hit apply. This will render back into Photoshop for me. Okay, so now you can see it's actually applied the gold. Now here's the problem with that. Uh, by default, that filter fills the transparent area with the tint color. And it's true that I could have selected the letters and only applied the filter to that, but because of the beveling and edging that it produces, it actually works outside of the existing pixels. So what I'm going to do here is take that original lettering, which is why I kept a copy of it, I'm going to control or command click on that layer thumbnail to make a selection. And then uh, let me just zoom in here. And then I'm going to go to select, modify, expand and I'm gonna choose 8 for 8 pixels and if you notice there that jumps right to the outside of where that filter had scaled the lettering so now on the layer the gold is applied to I can just choose a layer mask and now I've got my lettering okay so now I've got some pretty cool gold lettering and this is exactly the way that I did the other lettering in the composite that you saw earlier okay now how do I get it to be a little bit grainy well I convert this into a smart object. That way I can take advantage of smart filters. I add a little bit of noise. And I do this with almost every composite because photographs generally have noise. They have, you know, these photo sites 
um, from the camera sensor. And so there's a little bit of texture to everything in a photograph. So I just add a tiny, tiny bit of noise. Um, that's probably enough right there. Let's just go ahead and make that an even five. And I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to add just a tiny bit of Gaussian blur. Uh, because again, cameras and lenses are rarely as sharp as digital graphics are. So if I just soften that up just a teeny weeny bit, somewhere around a 0.3, hit OK. And if it's still coming on too strong, don't forget that with smart filters, you can double click these little slider icons and you can reduce the opacity or choose a blend mode for that particular smart filter. So if I reduce the noise just a little bit there, it re-renders that out for me. Okay. So now if I zoom back out, you can see I'm starting to get my gold lettering. Okay, now let's look at the chain. So when making the chain, we're basically going to use the same technique we used for the letters. We've got our custom brush from earlier, which is our link that we made. And I'm just going to paint downward following the contour of the body, right? So here we come around the neck, a little bit around that collarbone. Same thing here, come around the curve of the shoulder, vertically down, and then let it start pulling into the weight of the necklace. Okay, so same thing, we're gonna apply Filter Forge. And, and I just wanna show you, as I zoom in, look at all the highlights and detail that Filter Forge added. This is why I didn't wanna waste time trying to figure out how to make gold. It does a really good job for me. There's some reflections in here, there's some elements in here that just would've taken me more time to figure out. So once you've got that down, um, it'll look really, really good. So we're gonna go ahead and make the duplicate, do the same technique we did in the letters, and then we'll start looking at how to tone this all up. Okay, so got our chain, we've got our gold lettering, Filter Forge did a, a killer job getting all these highlights and details in here for us on the chain. You can see how effective that brush technique worked with connecting all this. And uh, next up, I want to just go ahead and add some shadows. So what I've done is I've made a duplicate of my lettering here on a different layer, filled it with black, and what I'm going to do is actually go ahead and blur this out. So uh, again, take advantage of those smart filters, convert it to a smart object, come in here, choose blur, Gaussian blur, and get the lettering nice and blurred out. Okay, now, here's the thing. I'm going to free transform that shadow, right? Just Command T, pull that from the background here. And I'm gonna try to follow a couple of different things. The light's coming from the upper left here, so the shadow should be coming down to the right. That follows the shadows on the collarbone, etc. So I'm trying to get this in, but what I'd like to do at this point is go up here and choose Warp during Transform. So you just press this button and it gives you a little grid. So now you've actually got the ability to control the angles of where the shadows fall to the contours of the body. Right? So we can just tweak this out a little bit, make some nudges. I'm just going to pull this down a little bit here and do this until you like the angle of where the shadows are falling off of your letters. And you can just grab any point on the inside here and nudge this around and squish it up. It works really, really well. So I'm just going to go ahead and extend this a little bit further across, a little bit more dramatic mood lighting. Like that. I'm going to hit enter, and now those filters will be reapplied, so you can see that there. At this point, I can just go ahead and turn down the opacity on this layer, just so it looks a little bit more natural like that. You're going to do the exact same technique for the chains, you're just going to have a duplicate layer. We're going to go ahead and convert it to a smart object blur it and free transform it, okay? All right, we'll do that real quick and then we'll come back and look at the next step. So some of the little details that you can spend time on is painting more highlights into the necklace, um, adding some little etch details, things like that, and that, that looks nice. Um, one of the things that I did was I added some cast shadows just to tone it down a little bit after using the filter. So you can see here I've got a section of just shadows added to the bottom of the lettering. <clears throat> These are just painted in from a selection. And uh, if I just turn those on and off, you can see the difference that makes. It's actually a, a pretty powerful effect for making it match the lighting of the photograph, right? The lighting coming from this top left. Um, I did the same thing with the chain. I have a, a just white to black gradient that's knocked out with a selection of the necklace here. And that's just set to overlay with a lower opacity of 49%. So if I turn that on and off again, it just sort of changes the dimension of the necklace a little bit. And then because it's popping so much, the contrast is so strong, I also did a levels adjustment layer that's just a selection of the whole necklace and chain. And then in here, I reduced the output levels by 20 and 227 to reduce the contrast so I didn't have pure blacks in my necklace. 
from here, we can start toning it for the effect of the image, right? And I wanted sort of this crushed black effect uh, that I see really popular with uh, photographers right now. So let's just go ahead and do that. And the way to do this is right at the top here, just go ahead and add a solid color layer. You're gonna pick sort of a skyish royal blue combo. My uh, code here is 246CBD. And then from here, you're gonna change your blend mode to exclusion and reduce the opacity on this down to about 30%. Okay, so just go ahead and make that 30. And then to get my lens flare in here on a layer beneath that, I'm just gonna fill a layer with black, go in here and choose filter, render, lens flare. I generally go with the default 50 to 300 millimeter zoom, but you can choose any of these depending on your taste. And you can click in here and move this around. When you're happy with it, press OK. That renders in. And then we just change the blending mode of this lens flare layer to screen. And that will get rid of all of the blacks and keep the white highlight. So there you can see a breakdown of how I built this, this composite image out. And uh, hopefully you found that helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments and I'll try to answer them all. And I hope you guys have fun playing with uh, Photoshop and Filter Forge and making some gold necklaces. All right, guys, have a good one.